Hi, welcome to episode 3. In this video we're going to set up the game background. First thing you're going to do is go to the link in the description. It has the resources for this game. I'm going to download those and we're going to find Android Studio Projects, the folder where your projects are in. Go to the game, app, source, main, resources. We're going to create a new folder called drawable slash no DPI. Copy these into the folder. Let's see if they're here. There we go. This one's going to be the image for a background. Now we're going to go into the Android manifest and right here is your activity. This is the game activity that we're working in. We're gonna set the orientation to landscape. Now, now what we want to try to do is get this image right here onto the phone. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna create a new class new Java class called background. And this class is going to use something called a bitmap. Alt enter import. And of course we need an X and Y coordinate for the background. Now the constructor. Constructor has one parameter, and that's going to be the bitmap passed into this class. And then image is going to equal that. And of course, we need a, an update and a draw method. So let's go to our game panel and instantiate this class. First, create the reference. And here, we're going to instantiate the background. And here's the important part. Right here, we're going to get this image, this grass background image. We're going to pass it into the background class constructor. Get bitmap factory decode resource r dot travel dot grass bg1 there we go Then we want to update our background. We want to draw our background. First we have to override the draw method from the surface view class. canvas. So in the draw method, we're going to draw image that no 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 canvas that draw bitmap 
image x, y, which are automatically set to zero up here. So zero, zero, null. So this is cool. We should have a working background now. But what would be even cooler is if we get the background to move or to scroll. So how about we go to the update method here and we change the x position every time it updates, which update is constantly being called by this update method in the game panel. X was it called? So we're gonna have one more in variable. And dx stands for the vector. So we're gonna set vector. here and we'll set it to negative 5 so the background image is slowly going to move off the screen now but what happens when it's completely off the screen well we want to reset it so if x is less than 0 the image is completely off the screen x equals 0 and I'll start moving off the screen again but we have another problem. What's going to be taking up the space while the image is moving off the screen? What's going to be taking up the rest of the space? And that's where we're going to draw a second image in front of this image so that the scrolling looks continuous. So if x is less than 0, if, the, if part of the image is off of the screen, we're going to compensate for that by drawing a second image on top of that. Not on top, but after that. Oh, forgot an important part here. Look at the background. The dimensions are 856 by 480. These are going to be the dimensions of our game. So. In our game panel, we're going to create public static final width equals 856. So here we go, now we should have a scrolling background. Now if we run this, let's see what happens. Let's create a new virtual device on um, the highest resolution, the biggest screen. Mm, how about this one? And we'll call it biggest screen. And we're gonna come across a problem here. Our game is set to 856 by 480, but on the biggest screen the dimensions are much larger than 856 by 480. So we need to scale it. But we'll see what it looks like. So remember, we're in landscape, so we're going to hit control F12 to make it landscape mode. And I'll show you here how to scale it. First, let's just do this. No, wrong one. The canvas is not null. We'll wrap this all up in a NIF statement. Hmm. 
it's not moving. Why is it not moving? Um. Oh, oops. Wrong. If x is less than negative, game panel dot width. That was dumb. Alright, anyway, as you can see, the background was not scaled all the way. So. We're going to scale it. So first we're going to create the scale factor. And this is going to be for x. And what does get width give us? Get width gives us the width of the entire phone screen. Not the game, but the entire surface view, which is full screen. Get width over the width of our game. So the width of the entire screen over the width of our game. Same thing for height. This is going to be the factor that we scale it by. And before we scale it, we're going to create a saved state of the canvas before being scaled. And then we're going to scale it. Scale factor x. And then after scaling it and drawing the background, we're going to return back to that save state. And why do we return back to the save state, the unscaled state? Because if we didn't have this, it would just keep scaling. Every time we call the draw method, it would just keep scaling to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It wouldn't stop. So we have to return back to its original unscaled state. Now let's run this. That's pretty cool. We have a continuous background image. So I'll be posting the link to the resources and my code in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And in the next episode, we're going to create the player. Thanks for watching.